Hey there, CrossFit Deliverance athletes. Welcome to another installment of the Be Relentless vlog. Uh, let's get into the programming uh, for today. What we're looking for is um, really for you to stretch yourself in terms of the wad. And we'll get back to that too a little bit, right? Pick, chew off a little bit more than you can chew in the beginning and then scale down from there. So let's get into the skill practice though. We're gonna be working on handstand pushups and versions, right? The first chunk of that 12 minute EMOM is going to be freestand handstand holds, maybe a walk up against the wall, um, the box kick up drill, maybe some donkey kicks for those of us that are still working on getting inverted in the correct position to where in they end right, where we're finally upside down, our uh, chest is facing away from the wall and our back is towards the wall. On the middle, right, we're just working on, for those of us that weren't able to get up on the wall, wall yet, to go and get in a wall walk and get some just time under tension, being upside down in a static good hold position. And for those of us um, that can get it into the position we're working on those handstand push-up negatives to drop ourselves into the correct position of the tripod pose. Remember, if you already have um, handstand push-ups, feel free to go ahead and go into a negative, right, a deficit. So go ahead and get some plates, control that deficit down, and then of course control yourself down out of the tripod um, through crow, right? If you have no idea what that means, Right, go ahead, ask the coach, they'll be able to demo you. And of course, uh, the end is just working on just strict handstand push-ups, tempo kipping handstand push-ups for just building raw strength in position. For those of us that still can't get upside down, that's okay, right? Go ahead, grab a pair of dumbbells, grab a pair of um, kettlebells, go ahead and get some uh, push press, right? Double arm, and then go ahead and work on that three second negative down. The workout is going to be uh, five rounds, 10 pull-ups, and then is going to be 15 burpee box jumps, right? Um, so it, it, it's a, a fair amount of reps and it's gonna be a little bit of a longer workout, but because it is a, it, it is a um, couplet, so only two movements, and traditionally couplets can move pretty quick, right? Uh, as soon as you're done with one, you go on to the next and it, it creates this physicality, this stimulus that can be um, pretty tasking, right? In terms of lungs. The burpee box jumps are a slower movement in terms of cycle rate. No matter even if you do them fast, it's gonna take a little while for you to get 15 done. So that means by the time you get back to the pull-ups, your arms in terms of pulling would have had a fair amount of rest. So for those of you that just got your first few kipping pull-ups or strict pull-ups, or uh, if it's chest to bar, this is a workout where I want you to go ahead, try to bite off a little bit more than you can chew, and go ahead, if you know you can't get a full volume of 50 in over the entire course of the workout, go ahead and say, cool, every time I jump on the pull-up bar, I'm gonna do the largest set I can at the hardest level of pull up as I can, and then just go ahead and go back down to whatever you're scaling down to. So for those of you that are trying to go ahead and practice chest bar, get a set of chest bar in, even if that's just one, and then go ahead and finish out with normal kipping. If that's getting the biggest set of kipping pull-ups, and then go ahead and going down to either ring rows or jumping pull-ups, go ahead and do that, right? Um, for the burpee box jumps, remember we're gonna be looking at doing the burpee, then jumping up onto the box and getting full extension of the hip and the knee, right? We're standing all the way at the top of the box. Um, guys, I, I already kind of went into the intention of the workout for you guys, right? I want you guys to try to stretch yourself in that position um, of the pull-ups, but also the, if anything, if you're trying to think of a pacing, strategy or intention, go ahead and try to make sure your burpee box jumps are consistent, right? You're rhythmic, I could set my watch to the pace that you're moving. There is no point of you stopping for too long on the top of the box or at the bottom, right? It's a nice, smooth, even cadence. Um, the accessory work is going to be holding 60 seconds in a hip extension hold. Remember, that's where we're going to be looking down at the ground when we're in the GHD machine and we're gonna be flat, right? It's an essentially a prone position. Um, mobility, stability tips of the day, guys. I would go ahead, 
uh, really work on trying to open up the lats and go ahead and trying to get um, the calves and the hamstrings go ahead and loosened up, right? Uh, the burpees, we want the calves to go ahead with the box jumps to go ahead and try to be as loose as possible. The hamstring as well and the burpees so we don't pull into the low back and of course the lats and the pec, right? The anterior and posterior side of the shoulder would be loose up for uh, the pull-ups. Um, stability, guys, right? This is going to be uh, what I would focus for you guys is really kind of a midline position, right? So we're looking for the obliques, right? We want the spinal erectors to be warm, and then we want uh, the abdominals to be warm on the front. Um, that's going to go and help us to stay stable uh, and organized through the pull-ups and making sure we aren't hitting far and ranges of motion on the burpees, right? So when we go down to the ground, we're seeing that we're getting in this hyper extension as we let ourselves down, try to drop flat, and then on the way up, we aren't slinking back up and really doing that arched, almost cobra position on a push-up before we pop our hips up. Try to keep that midline organized and controlled, and that'll play dividends of just getting that neurological patterning of your midline always being on and organized, and it'll go ahead and kind of save that low back. Other than that, guys, uh, Frosty Friday was awesome. Thank you for all of you guys that showed up. Um, again, uh, guys, this last weekend, right, was the CrossFit uh, Games Regionals, right? So the East and South regions went. Uh, we've got a few more weekends to go. So if you guys have questions of what that is, right, feel free to ask a coach or go to games.crossfit.com and uh, you're gonna be, see the fittest individuals in essentially the regions of the world compete individually or as a team to get their ticket, right, to um, the CrossFit Games in Wisconsin this year, right? Um, that is always really fun to see um, the feats of just pure athleticism and just general fitness happen. So feel, feel free to look at that. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the sun. It's supposed to be amazing out. Remember, as you're out and about, be relentless in everything that you do and be okay and keep on ingraining that mindset of saying no to yourself now so you can say yes to yourself later. And I know we've been talking about that just with water intake and trying to in replace after you have your first adult beverage of choice or for some of you it just might be sugary drinks, right? Like um, rock stars or could be just sports drinks, right? that after you have that first item that kind of wets the whistle, kind of checks that box off of well-being, makes you feel good, default to water. But really, this is a concept that I want you guys to go ahead and try, try to think, cool, is there anything else that I can really be okay with and have freedom of saying no to it, right, in a certain amount of volume or period altogether? So because it's going to help me to be able to say yes and have a positive momentum to a goal uh, that you otherwise wouldn't have. So guys, again, be relentless in everything that you do, not only in the gym, but outside of the gym. We'll see ya.